how to make a flowchart using Google Drive. Um, just so you know, for my students, we're going to be creating technical directions. It's one of the eighth grade common core standards for California. And so far in this process, um, we've been sketching out some ideas of what our steps are going to be. This is my, these are my sketches. You can see they're just done by pencil. And then I'm going to go out and um, make some actual cut and paste images, although I'm still writing my directions by hand before we go on to Google Docs and create them. And for this step in my process, my process is, for my technical directions, just so you know, um, I'm telling people how to take geocache coordinates off a of website and put them onto a handheld GPS device. Okay, uh, so part of the process of creating these directions is to make a flowchart. It makes it a lot easier when you begin to see all the different steps, and it really helps you figure out the order in which things go, and it really helps you make sure you're not missing any steps. So to create one, you go to the Create button on Google Drive. You're going to choose Drawing. It's the easiest one for this. First thing I do is I click on the title. Uh, I'm going to call these Tech Directions Flow Chart. And if you're my students, you'll begin this with the class that you're in. This is English, so it's either E1 or E2, comma, your last name, right? Then comma tech directions flowchart before you share it with me. Okay, for me this is how I'm, what I'm titling it. Um, and then the next thing I want to do is under file I want the most bang for my buck, so I'm going to select page setup, and I want to make this as wide as possible. It's going to help my see how my table's now bigger. Uh, and now in order to get this started, click on shape. When you click on shapes. Down towards the bottom, you'll notice these are called flowchart shapes. This is a flowchart process. It's a nice little square. It doesn't really matter which of these icons you choose, but this is one of the easiest ones to write things in. And I'm going to select that, and now I can draw it any size I want. This is the whole page, so I want to make this as small as, and as readable as possible. Arial 14 is way too big. I'm going to make it 8. Double click on the inside, and you can begin entering your text. My first step is to go to the website where I'm going to get the coordinates from, and that's called geocaching.com. Now that didn't fit in my box, so I can stretch the box out a little bit until it does. I want it to look like that, make the box as small as possible. Now if you click on the box away from the text and draw it around, see that little red line up here? That tells me it's in the middle of the page. Okay, and I'm going to put it to the very top. There we go. Click away from the box, and that box is done. Now, in my steps, um, the first one of the first things I said is, do you have an account or not? Because you'll need to create one in order to get um, the geocache coordinates. So that's a, that's a must-happen step. It's an intricate step, you could say. So let's go back to the shapes. And one of these they call, there it is down here, they call this in a flowchart a decision box. So I'm going to put that in there. You don't really have to use these shapes, um, but I'm going to just because it makes it a little easier. And it doesn't matter how big or where you put it right now because you can always change that. Double click on the inside. I wish I didn't have to do this. There's probably a way to default them to start off as Arial 8, but it doesn't take that long. And I'm just going to put in, this is for my own use. My person, my reader's not going to ever see this, so I could just type in account. Um, and I'm going to shrink that down as big as I, or as small as I can and still have it all in one line, right? Almost there. <laughs> account, there it is. Okay, now once again, look at that, it lines up beautifully. See that little red line up here? I need to move it a little higher. There we go. <clears throat> now there's two answers to this, either yes or no, right? Let's go back to our shapes. Select the little circle, which they call, um, I'll show you next time. Make my circle. One of these answers will be no. And now I want to make another circle. The answer is going to be yes. Let me hover this long enough. They call this the connector. That works. It works good enough for me. Now watch what happens as I begin to draw this one. Oh, I think I deselected it. Sorry. Connector. As I draw this one, watch this. See how it lines it up with the other one? Isn't that nice? I know that's the same level. Very appealing to the eye. Um, and now we go to eight, and I'm going to say yes. Um. Now let's move this around a little bit. Watch what happens. It's going to tell me that it's in line, and then 
look at those two little blue lines. It tells me that it's the same distance apart from the uh, diamond here as the other one. Okay, pretty handy. Let's connect some of these dots, shall we? Let's take a line and make it an arrow. And see how it gives you the middle of the box? I'm going to start at that dot, let go here. There's my arrow. Can't see the arrow. I don't like that. Oh, I don't want that arrow. Hit delete. So instead, I'm going to drag this down a bit. But notice how the arrow extends with me. If I move it over here, the arrow extends. How cool. Uh, but I want it to be in line with the one, and I want to make sure they can see the arrow. So that brings my circle out of alignment. And now it's in alignment. Let's bring this circle down. Now it's in alignment. And you've got two possible answers here, right? Yes or no. So there's no. There's yes. Uh, there's no other third choice. If there was, I could put it down here. Now, what's going to happen if they don't have an account? They need to create one, right? And they call this one an alternate process. So I kind of like the shape too. So let me draw a box that is an alternate process that's going to say create account. Now, in my written directions, I'm going to include that people can pay for the account or not, but I'm not going to put that in the flowchart here. I suppose I could. I can make another little decision box that says, do you want to pay or do you want a free account? But for right now, I'm not going to. That's kind of up to you how many steps you want to include. Let's connect it. And then if they do create an account, that's going to take... Oh, this one doesn't work for this. Let me show you. Um, in your lines box, you have an elbow connector. Check this out. So I can bring it to here, and it automatically bends it up. And then if I select arrow, I can start the arrow here and move it up, and it turns it into an arrow. Isn't that cool? All right. So here's the flowchart. Go to geocaching.com when you're there. Do you have an account? If no, create an account. Do you have an account? <laughs> yes. All right. Um, the next thing is in my instructions that they need to select play from the home screen if they have an account. So let me put that over here. Let me line up the box. I want it to be the middle of the circles. There we go. I really like how these modern software have those kind of default things. Select play. Bink. Looks like I could shorten that box a bit. Make it smaller too. Select play. Now, because I did that, it affected if it's in line or not. Now it's in line. I can move it closer because we're going to have a lot of steps here. Make these things as condensed as you can. That's, again, that's why I'm doing um, size 8 font. Because as you see, there's a whole page. That's going to be big enough. I mean, look at this. This is the sample I'm using. And as you can see, it prints. this is 8. It prints big enough. Um, now, after they select play, they've got some choices. They can look for a cache by a number of different reasons. There's three more popular ones, and those are the three that I'm going to use. So let me go back to my diamond, because it's one of those decisions. Line it up with the select play box, get it a little closer. And in that box, they're going to select hide and seek a cache. This gets a little tricky. It's a lot to write. Hide. Let me just abbreviation for this. Seek a cache. All right. Once the, oh, look, it all fit in there. Can I shorten my box a little bit? Well, it looks kind of like the same size as that one. Look at this. As I move it around, see how it's now in alignment with my other diamond? That means it's the exact same shape. I like that. Things look good when you do that. So there's three predominant ways to hide and seek a cache. One of them is by the coordinates. Almost done here, folks. Just stick with me. By In the geocaching business, we call them chords for short. Okay. Circle's a little bigger than a yes and no. I don't think I'm going to be able to get the same size because there's more words to put in these choices. Another way you can do it is by, it says by postal code on the, web, on the website. I guess that helps European people because we call them zip codes in the United States. That's okay. By Postal, oh, oh, it's going to be there. Code. Notice how postal didn't make it. So I got to expand my circle a little bit. There it goes. And once again, see how it's matching to that other circle that said by chords. I like that. Oh, but now it's too small. 
so it's not going to be able to match. Sorry. Got postal code. One more. Shapes. This one is going to be, let me put the words in before I mess with it, by your address, because you have three different ways. You can just type in some coordinates, and it'll search for caches around there. You can type in a zip code, and it'll search for caches around that. Or probably the best one, which I recommend in my instructions, is to do it by address, because that shows you the ones that are most close to your house. All right? And you're not sharing your address when you create an account, so it's all good. All right, let me like, tighten up this circle. That one matches with that. This one now matches with that. Although I want this one to be equidistant from the... There it is. See that? When it's out here, it's too far away. When I bring it here, now it's the same distance from the diamond as the other. Let me finish my arrows here. Uh-oh, that's not lined up. I'll fix that in a second. So three different ways to go. Boom. Now it's all out of alignment. Let's see what happens if I move. Let me get away from that. I want the select tool. There we go. Now it's in alignment, but my <laughs> circles are off. That's okay. I can fix them. There we go. And now this one's going to need to come up. Awesome. Okay. Now, no matter which of these three things I choose, the next thing it's going to have me do is find the, the cache you want to go for. So let me do one more thing. And after this, you should have enough to be able to make your own flowchart. Um, I'm going to call this select cache. And watch all the different ways you can get here. This is where you kind of have fun. Let's line it up with, the tr with this up above. Can I do that? Wow, there's so many options. I love it. Um, eight. Select cash you want to look for. And in my instructions, I'm going to give them a few hints about which kind of caches they can look for. Select cache you want to look for, for which you want to look, but that's okay. I can get rid of the bad grammar for now. All right, line it up with the triangle above. And all these three points that I selected before will get there. I like the elbow connector. So let's have this one go this way. Let's have this one go this way. That's going to actually change when I get rid of that. And this one is going to go this way. Isn't that cool? And now we get the arrows. Oop, wrong deal. Arrow. Start here. Let go here. Start here. Let go there. And that, my friends, is the beginning of a flowchart. Okay? Notice how there's one more spot over here. So I can create some kind of a shape here. And that'll be the next step, right? Whatever it is. Make another arrow. That goes from here to here. And we're moving. Easy way to make a flowchart. Okay? So have fun. Gotta love Google Docs.